We're out here saying, hey, this isn't the person that we thought he was to begin with. Members of the Electoral College will cast their votes for president today across America. There's a movement to get electors in states Donald Trump won to vote against Trump. Find out why protesters at the Texas Capitol say the election was stolen from them. Tim Duncan becoming the eighth player in Spurs history to have his jersey retired last night. Number 21 raised to the rafters of the AT&T Center. Hear from Duncan as he thanks his teammates, coaches, and the fans. And a 16-year-old has returned home to San Antonio after placing in a worldwide martial arts championship. We'll show you how she's one step closer to achieving her Olympic dreams. You're watching Spectrum News all day. Thanks for joining us on Spectrum News. I'm Ed Greenberger. We've got some of the coldest temperatures of the past two years with the wind chill. Some areas even had temperatures in the single digits this morning. Let's get a more detailed look in your weather on the ones. Hi again, everyone. Rich Siegel with you here in the Spectrum News Weather Center. Breezy and cold again today, although not as cold as it was yesterday because of the sun, and we will get into the 40s this afternoon. Breezes subside through the evening. It's still cold in the morning, and then we'll warm up with some sunshine tomorrow after 40s today. We'll uh, climb into the 50s tomorrow, and here are your forecast highs for the afternoon. Most will be in the low to mid 40s. We'll talk about lows coming up later this half hour. Today, the Electoral College will cast their votes to officially elect the next president of the United States. In all states, except Nebraska and Maine, all of the electoral votes typically go to the winner of that state. But could this year be different? Our Max Gordon joins us from the state capitol, where the 38 members of the Texas delegation of electors will meet this afternoon. And he's not the only one. Max, what are you seeing there? Well, Ed, these protesters are urging the electors to vote their conscience. That is, these protesters are urging those electors to break with the Republican Party and vote for someone other than Donald Trump. Now, in the rare chance that Trump does not receive the required 270 required electoral votes, the decision would go to the U.S. House of Representatives. One Texas elector, Chris Suprin, has said he will not vote for Trump, but won't vote for Clinton either. This also comes as the Texas Secretary of State received a petition with 265,000 Texan signatures calling for the electors to vote their conscience. It's a highly unlikely outcome, but it's the last hope for those wishing to keep Trump from the presidency. The Electoral College was made for this purpose. It, it doesn't happen often. It shouldn't happen often, but this is the time that the Electoral College was made for. Now, the Texas delegation of the Electoral College is set to vote at 2 p.m. today. Stick with Spectrum News as we keep you updated on the developments. And back to you. All right, Max, thank you so much. As Max said, we will keep an eye on the Electoral College voting for you all day long right here on Spectrum News. Trump senior advisor Kellyanne Conway says the pressure many electors are receiving to defect undermines American democracy. But RNC chairman Reince Priebus whom Trump has chosen as his chief of staff, says the team expects today's vote to go smoothly. Look, we, we expect everything to fall in line. We've got one particular individual in Texas without a faithless elector statute in Texas. But other than that, we're very confident that everything is going to be very smooth tomorrow. And this harassment from groups like MoveOn.org and the Democrat Party should stop. And that's what the American people demand. On Twitter last night, Trump said if he had lost and his supporters had called for faithless electors, they would be, quote, scorned and called terrible names. San Antonio City Councilman Mike Gallagher says he won't seek another term in May. In a statement, Gallagher said, during my time on council, we have established great working relationships between neighborhood organizations and city staff, supported revitalization initiatives along the Northeast Corridor, and brought historic recognition to the district with the El Camino Real. San Antonio is already narrowing down what to fight for on the federal level in Washington. Our Lisa Underwood shows us how the city's legislative priorities are shaping up for 2017. As a new presidential administration prepares to settle into place, Congress passed a continuing San Antonio resolution. is drafting its own to-do list in Washington. The main goal is to prepare for one million more people come 2040. But right now, there are three top federal priorities for the new year. Number one is a nonstop flight from San Antonio to Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport. 
This is a rare case where the market demand isn't the only factor. Congress literally has to okay us flying into Reagan National. Next year, the FAA will pick which cities can fly directly into D.C. Joint Base San Antonio in the last two years booked over 17,000 flights to the Washington, D.C. area. More than half of them went to Reagan National, even though there's not a nonstop today. Speaking of JBSA, number two on the list is protecting the Alamo City from base realignments and closure. We want to be best positioned to not only protect the bases we have, but also grow our missions. As new missions come, so do more people. How they get around the city is the third priority for San Antonio. We maintain a 4,000 mile network of streets and we have more than a billion dollars in needs in street repairs. I think the case should be Texas is a contributing state to the federal dollars for transportation. We want some of that money back. We need to realign the priorities. As questions loom over the upcoming months, as they say in the movie, put on your seatbelts, it's going to be a bumpy ride. City leaders are ready to put plans into action. From downtown San Antonio, Elise Underwood, Spectrum News. Eventually, the council will approve the city's federal legislative agenda before representatives head to Washington to advocate for San Antonio. Some other items include employment tax credits, funding for the historic missions, and teen pregnancy prevention. It's now safe for people in Corpus Christi to use their tap water. and The mayor has ended the water ban that was in place because of a chemical leak that was reported last week. The EPA stepped in to help resolve the situation. The leak was traced back to a backflow problem at Ergon Asphalt and Emulsions. Up to 24 gallons of a chemical from the industrial plant likely leaked into a water pipeline. Several lawsuits have been filed against Ergon and Valero, claiming they exposed business owners and residents to toxic chemicals. The San Pedro Creek Revitalization Project is set to begin this week. That means you should expect road closures downtown. Today, Houston Street will be blocked off completely. Del Rosa and Commerce will be reduced to by two lanes on the one-way streets. The $175 million public works project should be finished in about a year and a half. It's going to be very inviting to, to locals. It's going to be very open. Uh, and we think it's going to help drive uh, more housing opportunities along uh, the creek and downtown San Antonio. When complete, the project will support the 100-year floodplain while restoring water quality. The birthplace of the city will also better connect downtown to the historic west side. A local martial artist returns home after a great showing at the World Championships in Cyprus. 16-year-old Johnson High School junior Mariah Holging brought home the bronze medal from the World Sambo Championship. She competed against athletes from all over the world. Placing in world championships like the one in Cyprus can eventually help Holguin reach her ultimate goal, a chance to compete in the Olympics. Martial arts can do a lot for a girl. It just can help them like with responsibility and self-confidence, and it's just it really forms a girl's character if they know how to defend themselves. Holguin started training when she was nine. She trains at least six days a week at Universal Judo on San Antonio's north side. Alegria, alegria, alegria. It's a San Antonio tradition welcoming the spirit of Christmas. Last night, dozens took to the streets of downtown celebrating La Gran Posada. Every year, the community reenacts Mary and Joseph's search for a place to stay on the night of Jesus' birth. The procession traveled from Milam Park all the way to San Fernando Cathedral, ending with a prayer service and Christmas carols. It's an opportunity for each one of us to answer what is our journey in life and our journey to our, our final birth in the, in the divine eternal life. And, and, and I think this is an opportunity for us to want to come together as community. San Antonio's very first La Gran Posada took place back in 1731 after the establishment of the Via de San Fernando. Cold, dry, and clear. The winter weather is here for another day, but we'll see a warm-up soon. We'll show you when. And your weather on the ones up next. Thank you.